Hey, my friends, I'm going to tell you about my mother and what she's telling when she's, go back, she's going back to France and she's invited to a tea party with her friends, her girlfriends. So here is she. Hello, gals. It's good to see you again after those four weeks in the U.S. I mean, it's been amazing, you know. Even though I've been there 14th time, I am still very surprised of what I see. So, please, I will tell you today, you won't have any chance to say anything because I will be doing the talking all the time. I have so much to say. So, just keep eating your little cakes, drink your tea, and we'll be fine. So, I have so much to tell you, I don't know even where to start. But, okay, let's think about uh, my daughter and my son-in-law. They are very interesting people, as you know. I mean, I just dearly love them, you know. Um, so, here is one of the things that I was expecting even before going, because it's not the first time. So, my son-in-law, here he comes, you know, with his big smile from one ear to the other. And he says, Claudia, Claude, um, would you please help me do something if you had a second, if you had a minute? So that's his expression, is if you have one minute, you know, I mean, how can I refuse that? I mean, everybody knows that I have nothing to do in this house and my daughter not being working. Of course, we have plenty of time, but he said, okay, could you please help me if you had a minute? Of course, so I say, yes, I mean, I can't refuse. And he says, okay, here is what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to help me Put some stones on the railroad, on the rail track. Yes, you heard it well, on the rail track. As you all know, I mean, this house is full of trains, you know. Um, there are pedal trains, there are electric trains, diesel engine, steam locomotive, everything you can think of, different sizes, everything. I feel like I have spent my four weeks in a station. My daughter lives in a station, you know, trains are inside and outside. And here he comes with his big smile and says, okay, can you help me with laying some stones on the rail track? Okay, it's gonna be easy. And he says, okay, first of all, you collect the little stones. But what you really want to do and make sure you do carefully and insist on that carefully is you want to wash and rinse the stones, each stone. So I'm still thinking, okay, what's the matter with that? I mean, how crazy is that? These stones are going to be laid outside on the track and you want me to clean those stones. Well, so I asked, but why? I mean, I, why do you want me to do that? Well, this is very simple, you know. A simple grain of dust could derail the train. Yes, you heard it well. Could derail the train, a little grain of dust. So. Well, of course, I don't want to be responsible for derailing a train. I mean, we all know what could happen with that. We've seen what happened in Canada and elsewhere. So I said, okay, I will help you do that. And here it comes. He gives me a pan and he shows me how to shape those little stones and rinse them and lay them on the, on the track. So I'm thinking to myself, is that because, I mean, those guys are thinking of the gold rush in America and they like to uh, shake those stones and lay them on the track? I, I still don't understand that, but I was happy to do that for my son-in-law. And you know what? Because he seemed so happy, and he was indeed very happy with what I did, he said, great job. Good job. And that's always what they say in the U.S., you know, whatever you do, if it's well done, then it becomes great job. Okay, so he said, well, since you did it so well, why don't you help me with something else? And I'm thinking to myself, I mean, maybe I did that too well, you know, I should have slacked a little bit, but I can't do that to my daughter, I can't do that to my son-in-law. So he said, if you have a minute, again, this expression, if you have a minute, uh, why don't you uh, engrave some of the rails? Yes, he wants me to engrave some of the rails with a tool and he wants me to put the number and the date of each of those steel rails. So I've done that. But you know, it's kind of crazy. But that, that I mean, I, I just love him dearly, but he is kind of a character. So one other thing that he 
they both lied. You know, the Americans, they don't, they're not so good at recycling. But my daughter and my son-in-law, what they like is to make some compost. Yes, some compost. And since, you know, I wasn't doing much, I do a lot of cooking. And of course, I peel the vegetables. So he explained to me, okay, once you've peeled the vegetables, you keep them in a, in a bowl, and at the end of the day, you take that bowl and throw it on the compost pile. Okay, okay, I can do that, that's fine. I still don't know why they do so much compost since they don't grow anything in their backyard. But that, that, that's them, that's their business. I mean, I don't want to do anything with that. So here I am, and it was kind of the end of the day, it's a little bit dark, and I'm thinking still, I want that to be clean. So I'm taking my little bowl and start to go in the forest, hoping not to make any bad encounter. So I throw the vegetable peels and what I see something, something quite big, like a cat, you know, somewhat eating on that pile. I knew it was not a cat because I don't think that cat would do that. So uh, I just looked quickly, I said hello, goodbye, and then ran away. And then I came back and asked my daughter, I said, Oh, I think I've seen something, you know, quite big, you know, a long nose, I mean, little hair, and white and gray. And my daughter said, have you seen the tail? I said, no, I haven't seen the tail, because, I mean, I, I didn't want to spend too much time. Well, she said, you've seen an, op an opossum. Opossum, I said, yes, you've seen an opossum. I will tell you, girls, I mean, these people, they just live on a daily basis in a, like a Bambi Disney movie. I mean, they, they have all that wildlife around them. It is just unbelievable. I mean, so they have raccoons, they have deer, they have foxes, they have birds, they have snakes, they have um, all sorts of animals that we never see in France. I mean, I, I can tell you, you know, even in France, when you are driving on the road and you see a deer crossing sign, have you, have one of you seen, ever seen a deer crossing? I can tell you I have never, but I mean, those guys in the US, they have deer everywhere and they'll tell me, I mean, they have accidents and everything. So I think that it's, it's I mean, it's amazing. I mean, they, every day they live in that Bambi kind of movie, you know? So that's what I wanted to tell you. And I have much more to say, but, um, oh, the last thing, the last thing, okay. I am very surprised, I mean, how those people live, you know? They're not afraid of being robbed or anything. They barely lock their doors. And I keep telling my uh, grandson, Martin, I mean, you should be closing your curtains or you should be, uh, why don't you have um, things, shutters, you know? I, I'm so surprised. You know what, they're shutters? You won't believe me. Shut shutters are fake on their houses. No, I, no, no, that's true, that's true. They can't move them. It's just decoration. I had never seen that before. It's just decoration. You can't move them. So here I am, you know, completely scared about being robbed or anything, uh, someone breaking in the house. So my daughter said, well, don't worry, mom. You know, we have a security system, alarm system. I said, okay. So one of the things I was always asking, you know, when we were going up, you know, um, and just before going to bed, I, are you sure you've turned on the alarm system? I know I was going on her nerves, but I mean, I couldn't think that we could live here in this forest with having, you know, locking our doors and without being much more in security, safety that I, I would imagine. And my dearie son-in-law, you know what he did? Oh, he said, yes, yes, I turned on the alarm system. I said, good. And then I went down just to verify if he had locked the door. You won't believe that. He had not even pushed the door. The door was not closed. So he had turned on the alarm system just by pushing the door, but the door was still open and not locked. So this is my dearly son-in-law. See you then for more adventures. Bye.